Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Code One Digest. Today in this video we will discuss what is the state design pattern. Where to use the state design pattern in our project. I will also show you the Java code implementation of this pattern. And at the end we will discuss the benefits of a state design pattern. So stay tuned till the end of the video. Friends, in the previous video we discussed about command design pattern. Can you explain what is command design pattern? And how to use it? Please reply your answer in the comment section. If you have not seen that previous video, so I recommend you to go and watch that video. It's a very important design pattern to learn. The link is provided on your screen and also shared in the description section of this video. Just to recall, what is command design pattern? Command design pattern turns a request into a standalone command object that contains all the information about the request. So for more information, please go and see the previous video. Friends, before we proceed in this video, I want you to subscribe my channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality contents for you, but I'm not getting subscribers. I want you to like, share and subscribe my channel so that I can grow Code One Digest family. Thank you. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's start with state design pattern. What is a state design pattern? State design pattern is a type of behavioral design pattern. And a state design pattern lets an object alter its behavior when its internal state changes. It appears as if the object changed its class. The pattern provides a cleaner way for an object to change its type at runtime. Isn't it amazing? We can achieve this using a dynamic inheritance along with composition where the difference of classes represent different states and functionality and an object can switch its type during the runtime. The state pattern is used when you want to have an enclosing classes switch between a number of related contained classes and pass method call onto a current contained class. Many programmers creating a class which performs slightly different functionality based on argument passed to the class. This frequently leads to a switch case or if else statements inside the class that determines which behavior to carry out. This become inelegant and dirty. A state pattern solves this problem in a cleaner way. A state pattern allows an object to change its behavior depending on the current value of an object. Friends, let's understand a state design pattern with an example. Imagine we have a document class. A document can be in one of the three states, draft, moderation, and published. The publish method of the document works a little bit differently in each state. In draft, it moves the document to moderation. In moderation state, it moves the document to public. And in publish, it doesn't do anything. But if you see the implementation here, the implementation here is with lots of conditional statements like if else or switch case that selects the appropriate behavior depending on the current state of the object. Seeing this code structure raise an alarm. The biggest weakness here is once we start adding more and more state to a document, then the code gets uglier. The code like this is very difficult to maintain. The problem tends to get bigger as the project evolves. It's quite difficult to predict all the possible states and transition at the design stage. So how to solve this problem? So the solution to this problem is state design pattern. State pattern suggests that you create a new class for all possible states of an object and extract all state specific behavior into that class. Instead of implementing all the behavior in original object, save a reference to one of the state object in original class. A state object represents the current state of original object and delegates all the state related work to this state object. In original object, to change the state to another state, replace the state object with another state object, that is draft to moderation and moderation to publish. 
So here, object is changing its behavior as an embedded state object has changed. But remember that this possible only if all the state classes are derived from a common interface. Point to note here is this structure may look very similar to a strategy pattern, but there is one key difference between state and strategy. In the state pattern, the particular states may be aware of each other and initiates transition from one state to other state. Whereas a strategy design pattern would never know about each other. Okay friends, I have written a code for a state design pattern and I'll walk you through the code first and then I'll give you the demo by running this code. And this code is also available in the GitHub repository. You can download the code and play with it. The link of the GitHub repository is shown on your screen and also available in the description section of this video. Okay, let me show you what I have written. I have a state package where all my classes are there for this pattern. Then I have defined one bulb state because we are talking here about state pattern. We know the object changes the behavior when its internal state changes. So this is a state what I have defined. In this state, I have a name of the state and method, abstract method, change state button. Right? Then I have implementation of off state and on state. In this class, I am extending the bulb state class. Then in constructor, I am setting the state name to on for on and off for off. Then in change state, I am printing that the state of the bulb has changed and now it is in on state. Same way in off, I am setting the state name to off and saying that change the state state of the bulb and the bulb is now in off state right now let me show you what is my context that is my bulb object so in the bulb object i am having a instance of my state because this is my context it is having a state object here so instead of having the state code directly inside a bulb i am having that in a bulb state and that object I'm using it here as a composition. Now, whenever the state, this object changes, then the behavior of my bulb is changes. So I have a constructor of a bulb. Then I have a press button. Whenever I'm pressing this button, that time the state of bulb is changing. That means I'm calling the change state method of this state object with me. Now let me show you a test class what I have done. So in this test class, I have defined a bulb object. This is my context. And in this bulb object, I am setting the initial state is on state. That means the bulb is now in on state. Then I am pressing a button, I am pressing a button, and I am pressing a button. Then I am changing my state by passing a off instance of off state. Then I am pressing a button, pressing a button, pressing a button. And then again, I'm putting it on. Let's see what happens when we run this class. So when I'm setting it to on state, here it says the change the state of a bulb. Bulb is now in on state. When I'm pressing this button three times, that time it's printing that bulb is in on state because we have set it state to on. Then, at this line, at line number 13, we are setting it off. Then this three will print that bulb is in off state. So bulb is in off state, off state, off state. And then here I'm setting the bulb state on again. So I'm printing it, it is on. So likewise, you can implement this state pattern wherever it is applicable, wherever you feel that you can segregate the logic into a separate state classes where you have too many states for an object. And that way you can alter the states and context classes independently without impacting each other. And in future, you can add more and more state classes as well. So when do you think you can use a state design pattern? Whenever you have an object that behaves differently depending on its current state, the number of states is enormous and the state specific code changes frequently. That time you can think of using this pattern. 
the pattern suggests that you extract all this state specific code into a set of distinct classes as a result you can add new states or change existing one independently of each other that reducing the maintenance cost use this pattern when you have a class polluted with a massive conditional that alter how the classes behave according to the current value of the classes field use a state design pattern when you have a lot of duplicate code across similar states and transitions of a condition based state ma machine so what are the benefits we get out of this pattern the most important benefit that we get out of this pattern is single responsibility principle this pattern organizes the code related to particular state into a separate class it also supports open close principle that introduce new states without changing the existing state class or context class it simplifies the code of a context by eliminating bulky state machine conditional logic to state class okay friends now let me summarize what we have learned in this video today we understood what is a state design pattern we saw a real example of a state design pattern we also saw java code implementation of state design pattern and we saw use cases of a state design pattern at the end we also discussed the benefits of a state design pattern so friends let me know if you have used this pattern in any of your project or came across a scenario where this pattern can be very useful please reply your answer in the comment section in the next video we will cover what is a strategy design pattern we will learn a strategy design pattern we will also see the usage of a strategy design pattern we will also see java code implementation of a strategy design pattern and we will understand the benefits of strategy design patterns so stay tuned till the next video comes and please subscribe to this channel if you are new to the channel friends if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues this is very useful information for students beginners and software engineers i am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents so please help me growing the code one digest family please subscribe to code one digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos thank you